We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are on this planet we call Earth. And I want to say that I'm going to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Hey, let's get right to it. The unbiased UFO report. This is where we bring in our intrepid UFO reporter, John Hudson, to come on in and discuss everything UFOs with us on this beautiful night. And, John, we always appreciate when you get the time to come join us. So thank you so much for being here once again. Happy to do so. Happy to do so. All right. Let's start things off. Fiscal year 2022. What's happening with the UAP task force? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a couple of things in this that, that different people are interpreting different ways, but all in all, my personal opinion is it's, it's a good thing. Um, and, uh, basically, uh, Danny Silva, uh, did a nice report on this. So I encourage everyone to check it out. I'll provide a link to it later, but essentially there's a couple things in it that I think everyone should key in on. Um, uh, you know, one I thought was just interesting was that, um, all the data being asked for should be provided not only to the UAP task force, but also to the national air and Spence air and space intelligence center. And in my opinion, when you have, um, when you have an internal office, that's also a recipient of that data. Um, it, 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 it's weird, but often in a bureaucracy that puts a little more weight, um, on the, on the document creation and sometimes, sometimes has a positive impact on quality. Um, and, uh, you know, while we'd heard this before, it was nice to see it in writing that, uh, it is expected that this will be a, a, um, a quarterly report. So we, we, we're supposed to get something every 90 days, or I, let me restate that Congress will get something every 90 days. And, uh, you know, but, you know, the one thing that was, um, was really, really good was that there was, um, a specific mention about the fact that. All reported unidentified aerial phenomenal data related events that occurred during a time period other than the previous 90 days, but were not included in an earlier report must also be included in that report. And that's stipulated for every report. And so when you combine the fact that they're making it very clear that every agency has an opening to supply and an an expectation to supply the data. And you add the fact that they're saying that if you miss anything in one report, you don't get out of it. You have to include it in the following, uh, a following report. Once you realize you've missed it, this is really starting to kind of tie up all the loose ends that a lot of people will try to use as wiggle space to get out of doing things. And so this is really kind of putting the screws on people in a way. And so, you know, personally, I, I think that's a really good thing. I'm very optimistic about it. Now, are we hearing what kind of money they're going to be putting into this program? No, there's, there's no, there's no word of that yet, at least not what I found. And, um, you know, to be very honest with you, um, I, I, I rarely think that the money that we even hear gets applied is actually accurate um, because every department has all sorts of funny ways of, of moving around their, their internal funny money. Um, but um, but it'd, be, it'd be a good data point to, to find out. And as soon as I have it, I'll let you know. All right. I, I, I think that's important because, I mean, with the UAPTF, we still don't know how serious we're going to be able to take this group. You know, I guess with with them getting more budgeting money for the next quarter or the next fiscal year, this really shows that there might be something to a continuance of UAP studies within the American government. I I wholeheartedly agree. And and keep in mind, too, that they only need a really large budget if they're going to endeavor into a lot of um, a lot of um, after discovery research. If the point of that office is to collect and process records from other offices, 
their budget really doesn't have to be so huge for them to be effective. The bigger deal is what Bob reported in the previous panel, and that is that he's heard that the top person in the office is now going to be cleared up to the SAP level. And that, that to me, that's a much bigger deal than any budget number. Yeah, Bob's saying in the chat room, it will be a part of the authorized budget answer to the NDAA. It's awesome. Which, which we'll see what happens from there. All right, let's move on to section number two tonight. Dr. David Clark's report on Calvine UFO. What happened here? So this is fun. This is, um, I mean, keep in mind that a lot of this is, is, is just hypothesis at this point, but it's kind of a, a neat way that things are tying in because, um, you know, if you remember before what we talked about what Danny Sheehan had reported about this Mach 12 plane that had, you know, 120 nukes. Yes. And, you know, there were some weird details in Danny's reporting specifically about how it, it reached that speed and 120 nukes is kind of a, it's a big number and it's kind of an odd thing to just kind of pop out of nowhere. And I've also been kind of wondering, like, how could Danny get briefed on anything? I mean, anything Danny would be briefed on isn't really that secure. And so it'd have to be something fairly old. So then um, basically, you know, David Clark uh, comes out with this report he's been working on, on a, what is seemingly a totally different issue. And that is him showing possible evidence that the Calvine UFO was actually not really a UFO, that it was quite possibly a uh, a, a, um, a black US, a US program uh, that is commonly known as Aurora. And it turns out that the document that showed up a couple months ago that, that I think really kind of nailed this down pretty well, uh, it turns out that it was actually uh, David that got it released. So he's, he's really been the, 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 the forward push behind all this. But what was super interesting about David's report is that in it, he included a picture that was done by a, a defense magazine in 1990 uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a theoretical um, example of what Aurora might look like. And in that drawing, they oddly included uh, 121, so not 120, but 121 ports to release nuclear weapons from. And they even included, and I'll post all this later, they even included a cool little drawing of the very simple spring-based release system that would be used for each little warhead. And so the fact that, that this, this you know, uh, defense um, magazine said 121 back in 1990, you have uh, David Sheehan being told what he was told, which could be a, 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 a ship that's that old, because we're talking about something from the late 80s. And now I think we almost have a possible situation here where not only is, is David showing that the Calvine UFO might have been this Aurora uh, or at least a, a U.S. black program, but we might even have a tie-in to say that it's also the same vehicle that Danny Sheen was briefed on. And so once again, this is all hypothesis at this point, although I have to say, I think, I think David puts down a, a pretty good um, set of evidence to show that Calvine was, a, was a, not a UFO. But the last quick point I want to make is that the whole reason why people didn't hear about Aurora in Britain was because of something that was applied called the D notice, which is basically saying, hey, you know, this is a U.S. defense project. Don't talk about it. Well, this poster was the one that Nick Pope had on his wall that mysteriously disappeared. The fact that no one told him why it was removed, the fact that he didn't know that it wasn't a UFO, also in a weird way shows that. Uh, Mr. Pope was not as far up the totem pole as someone would like to believe because he obviously didn't have enough clearance to know that that picture he had up in his office that he claimed was a good evidence of a UFO was actually Aurora. That is very interesting. And, you know, there's been a lot of speculation by many people in the UFO community over the years on how deep Nick Pope actually went inside the Ministry of Defense with the United Kingdom when he worked uh, allegedly on the UFO program. Now, I have been on record. I, I have no problem saying this. I, we've never interviewed Nick Pope on this show, and we have tried to uh, get him. But on the flip side, I think a lot of what he says as a so-called expert in this field, and uh, I'm paraphrasing here myself, is, is very much nonchalant in his words because the information that he has is already what's been repeated by everybody else. He hasn't really given us anything new in a long, long time. That doesn't take away from his intelligence 
or anything like that. But I mean, when you're when you're an insider, you got to bring some, you know, juice to the table. People are thirsty. Yes. We need that juice. Yes. And, yes. And, and we're not getting it. We're not well, and getting the, the it. Last, sorry. Sorry. I was going to say the last point that I think is also nice about this is that, you know, we all always assume that all these sightings are UFOs. And we all know in the back of our heads that some of them aren't going to be. Some of them are going to be U.S. programs. And I think it's kind of nice that we have discovered one that was fairly popular and fairly well known that a lot of people hung their hat on that now really looks like it was Aurora. And so now we have a good example of a case where it wasn't a UFO and, you know, it, the world's not going to end. It'll be OK. And uh, and life goes on. But um, there were definitely some interesting things learned from from David's reporting. Well, you know, one of the things I want to post are to our audience here. If you want to learn more about the Aurora, really check out the work of Michael Schratt. He's an aviation historian. You can find a lot of his talks on YouTube, his entire full presentations. And he gets into the Aurora and other secret programs and uh, other secret uh, aircraft that are out there flying around or potentially flying around from the TR-3Bs to the replacements of the SR-71, which we could be up to the SR-75 right now. We just don't know because it's not being released. But anybody who has an interest in aviation and wants to learn about the Black Projects, I really suggest go on YouTube, type in Michael Schratt, that's S-C-H-R-A-T-T, and you will be blown away by his presentations and his literature and work that he does to dig out this information. And the information, he'll even tell you, the information that he has is all public knowledge. Everything that has been uh, placed in the public, from military magazines to popular mechanics to what's accidentally been released in budgets by the government. And that's how the name Aurora came out. He's a, he's a snoop. I mean, he, he stitches oh, yeah. together data from all over the place. And on top of that, he, he, he gives a great presentation. He's a lot of fun to listen to. So I, I, I could not agree more. I agree with Michael Huntington's comment here in the chat room. Learn your X-plane history, people of ufology. That is a very, very uh, astute comment there. You know, uh, very astute comment. So yep. I, I fully agree with that. Finally tonight... We only have you for about another two minutes here. Uh, we are getting into J.J. Abrams' first episodes of his new UFO documentary. Have you watched any of it yet? I have not yet. I'm planning it this weekend. Okay. All right. So I only started watching uh, the first episode. I only got about 10 minutes into it. And I'll tell you, the reason why I stopped watching it is the same reason why everyone's talking about it. And that was that he shows a bunch of stuff. Uh, pictures, videos, uh, audio, and there's absolutely no way to know what he's what the validity of what he's posting. Um, some of the stuff he he shows is stuff that some people feel have been has been already debunked. Other people disagree. Some of the stuff he shows, no one's seen before, and we don't have any kind of trail of authority. So you know, chain of authority, we have no idea where it came from. And so for me, and I I'm taking it from the comments I'm seeing on Twitter and the fact that uh, you know some shows were all about this today. Um, are, are, are taking away from our enjoyment of the show because we're all sitting there wondering like, well, wait a second. I've never heard that audio before. Where'd that come from? And so it's, it's unfortunately um, putting some interesting pressure on, on, on the, on the film because um, it's, 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 we just, we don't know how to process the images that are being shown. Very true. Very true. But you know what? At least we're getting something. There's new material. And it new looks material. pretty. And uh, of course, J.J. Abrams will make sure that it uh, is pretty, pretty for the camera. John, we will talk to you very, very soon. Thank you for another great edition of the UFO Report. Let's get to Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire.